Those of you watching us on YouTube, this is the second in our series uh, about Native American spirituality and Jesus of Nazareth. Uh, here in this part of Kansas, we have several Indian tribes around us. And really, in the United States, there's like almost 300 Native American tribes, and only half of those have federal recognition. And the spirituality of the Native Americans greatly affects us much more than what we realize. Today, the message is on vision quests and Jesus' own vision quest, 40 Days in the Wilderness. Our worship leader this morning read about Jesus being baptized and the Holy Spirit descending on him after he was baptized. That is absolutely the perfect scripture for this message today because that's exactly where this passage in Luke chapter 4 begins. If you'll take out your scripture passages that are in your bulletin and read that silently as I read it aloud. Let me tell you why I ask you to do that. People that study learning and, and memory, if you and I read it, some of us will remember it, but it, it's, it's easy to let that memory fade. If we read it silently as somebody else is reading it, we're going to remember it more. And that's why I'm asking you to read it silently as I read it aloud. Luke 4, verses 1 through 13. Now Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, left for Jordan, this is after he was baptized, and was led by the Spirit into the wild or wilderness. For 40 wilderness nights and days, he was tested by the devil. He ate nothing during those days, and when the time was up, he was hungry. The devil, playing on his hunger, gave him the first test. Since you are God's son, command this stone to turn into a loaf of bread. Jesus answered by quoting, quoting Deuteronomy. It takes more than bread to really live. For the second test, he led him up and spread out all the kingdoms of the earth on display at once. Then the devil said, They're yours in all their splendor to serve your pleasure. I'm in charge of them all and can turn them over to whomever I wish. Worship me and they're yours, the whole works. Jesus refused, again backing his refusal with Deuteronomy. Worship the Lord your God and only the Lord your God. Serve him with absolute single-heartedness. For the third test, the devil took him to Jerusalem and put him on top of the temple. He said, if you are God's son, jump. It is written, isn't it, that he has placed you in the care of angels to protect you? They will catch you, and you won't so much as stub your toe on a stone? Yes, said Jesus, and it's also written, Don't you dare tempt the Lord your God. That completed the testing. The devil retreated temporarily lying in wait for another opportunity. There's a number of things in this passage that are very interesting. Jesus had clearly memorized scripture. And if you haven't started memorizing scripture, let me encourage you to start memorizing Bible verses. When my dad became a Christian in Okinawa in World War II, the man who led him to a faith in Jesus encouraged my dad to start memorizing scriptures. And when I became a Christian, I tried to follow my dad's example. And it will literally save your spiritual life just like it saved Jesus. 
it's important to remember that in this vision quest that Jesus had, these 40 days with no food in the wilderness, that Jesus was a human being. I've gone a couple of weeks without food, but 40 days? And where in the Bible do we see 40 days? We see it with Moses. To a certain degree, you can say Moses went on a vision quest up in the mountain for 40 days. And that's where God gave the Ten Commandments, was after Moses' vision quest. So to a certain degree, Jesus is a second Moses, and you and I are the children of Israel. Moses had the children of Israel, brought the commandments down. Jesus had 40 days and brought the Holy Spirit down to you and me. When you don't eat for a long period of time, you get extremely hungry. Uh, I remember uh, there's there's an actor named John Candy, and he was always way overweight, and John would tell a joke about himself. He said, I went to a fat boy's uh, clinic, (laughs) and I lost a whole bunch of of weight. And when I got out of the fat boy's clinic, I got downwind from a hamburger place, and I just smelled the grease in the air. (laughs) And uh, you're not only very hungry, You are famished, and you're very weak. So Jesus was physically exhausted and weak. He was very hungry, and playing upon his hunger, the devil tempted him. I've never heard what I'm going to share with you today. I've never heard anybody say it like I'm going to say it today. And, you know, I I became a Christian at 17, so I've been going to church for a long time. And I just didn't go to Protestant churches. I went to Catholic churches, all kinds of different denominations. Uh, Those of you that are listening today that are Methodist, I'm going to kid you a little bit. I even lowered my standards and went to Methodist churches. (laughs) Actually, I went to a Methodist seminary part of the time, so I really appreciate that their understanding of the good news of Jesus, too. But uh, we, we really get pretty weak, even in our daily Christian lives. And what I'm going to propose to you is this. If we ever, if you and I ever needed to go on a vision quest in our lifetimes, during this coronavirus pandemic, we certainly need to go on a vision quest. Think seriously about not eating food for two or three days, just drinking water. Praying for this nation and this world. I personally believe that Christians praying for other people and praying, in this case, for Northeast Kansas, and praying for the United States, and praying for the world, I personally believe that our prayers are what holds the world together. We've, we've seen, from every nation in the world, tremendous unrest, tremendous death, Even China, who started this whole thing, Chinese news is managed news, and they hide. There are thousands of riots every year in China, but it doesn't appear in any of the Chinese newspapers. And so they're hiding a lot of coronavirus, but so are are we. Some of it's intentional, some of it's unintentional. We're a much more open society. But let me encourage you, If Jesus is truly our example, if we really do believe that he's our example, 
Think seriously about missing a couple of meals this next week. And the time that you would be eating, pray for people you love. Pray for people in pain. And pray for spiritual renewal in our nation and in the world. Moses is a great example. Jesus is even greater example of being on a vision quest. I'm going to talk a little bit about vision quests next Sunday too, so I won't go into the Native American vision quests quite as much, except mountains and cliffs are holy places to Native Americans. It's fairly hard to find a big cliff in Kansas. <laughs> Eastern Kansas were in a little bit better shape than Western Kansas, although it's the, the chick, uh, chicory breaks in uh, a rickery breaks in, in northwest Kansas have some mountains, and nevertheless, uh, find a place where you can be alone and pray. You know, I've shared with you before, I was down in Oklahoma, totally alone in the middle of like 160 acres, and talking to God. And God clearly gave me a commandment in my life to be patient. That would have never happened if I hadn't been on a little vision quest of my own. I could tell you story after story after story, but if you're really serious about your Christian life, maybe you're, maybe you're in town, maybe you can't get out in the country like Jesus was or like Moses was. Jesus said, pray in secret, and your Father, who sees in secret, will reward you openly. Go to a room where you feel safe. Lock your door. Go on your own vision quest. What will happen is sometimes similar to what happened to Jesus and really, I think this happens to every Native American. When you and I are alone, no NFL football games are going, no TV's going, no television or radio's going, we got to face ourselves. We all have significant weaknesses and blind spots. The devil was trying everything he could to get to Jesus. Everything he could. And you and I, we have light inside of us, and we also have darkness inside of us. Vision quests are really important. Because we find out who we are and we find out how much God loves us. Usually, with Native Americans, it's not anything spectacular. With me, it was probably a little more intense than a lot of people standing on top of a 500-foot cliff and having a, a, a really remarkable experience but everybody's spirituality is different but Native Americans are really onto something every person was encouraged in most tribes to go on a vision quest and everything that happened to them during that vision quest had spiritual significance. And here I am encouraging you to follow Jesus and his vision quests. Listen really closely. When you are alone with God, to what God tells you. And most of the time we're so busy 
with our activities, with our calendars, with our appointments. And of course, everybody has to go to the grocery store. Everybody has to go to medical appointments. Everybody has to get gasoline in their car. But if we can put that aside for a few moments, just be still in God's presence. One of the wonderful things that, about the University of the South class that I'm leading, I've been teaching centering prayer for years, even though it wasn't in the curriculum. They added centering prayer. That's just a Christian word for vision quest. And I just want to tell you one, one experience, and I, I mentioned this to you before, but I know some of you haven't heard this. I was so delighted when they asked the leaders of Education for Ministry for the University of South to begin doing centering prayer or vision quests in their own lives and so they could teach it to their students. And we were at uh, the Christian Church Disciples of Christ camp down in Camp Tawakani, uh over by Andover, Kansas. And there was a circular table. And there were seven of us, of us sitting at this table, and there was one empty chair. And so after they had taught us some of the foundations of, of centering prayer, they said, now we want you as a group to close your eyes, all of you, and for 20 minutes just sit in the stillness with God. And one of the things about vision quests, you don't think these 100,000 mile an hour thoughts, you just let them go. And so for 15 minutes, I just did that. And then I thought, you know, I'm just going to, with my eyes closed, I'm just going to go around the table and ask God to bless every single one of these people that are here. This would never have happened if I hadn't have been still inside. And so just, I silently just blessed that person, and I went around the table. And there was an empty chair right next to me. I could feel somebody there with my eyes closed. And so I just asked God to bless whoever was sitting in that chair. And then the leader of the, the training session said, now I want each of you to go around the table and share what happened to you in that time of centering prayer. And I waited till I was the last. Everyone else had shared what they felt. I, and then I said, you know, I, I silently pray with my eyes closed for everybody here. And somebody or something was sitting in the chair next to me and I asked God's blessing on that person. I have no idea who it was. You know, Jesus was a carpenter. There was a carpenter sitting next to me. <laughs> Wonderful Christian man, Doug Gilstrap. And he said, I know who it was. And the hair in the back of my neck sort of stood up, you know. And he said, when I moved to Wichita, I could not find work as a carpenter. And a man in our church would bring my family and wife and children food. And the same man would babysit our kids every so often to give us a break. I didn't have enough money to pay tuition for the education for ministry class. He paid my tuition. He died a year ago. And I'm absolutely certain that's him sitting in that chair. A lot of psychologists and psychiatrists will make fun of what I just shared with you. But I'll tell you one thing, and the reason I'm encouraging you to do this vision quest, 
one person with an experience is worth a hundred people that just have a theory. And we're going to be studying doctrine in our adult Sunday school class at nine o'clock with, with Dan. And it's, it's interesting. I'm, I'm reading one of the greatest Christian writers in Russian history. His name is Count Leo Tolstoy. And one of the things that Leo Tolstoy said about doctrine, I'm not knocking doctrine, Dan, because <laughs> doctrine is important. It's a structure that we need to know what we believe. But what he was, Leo Tolstoy was primarily talking about the Russian Orthodox Church. And he said, the danger for Christians is worshiping doctrine and not having a living relationship with Jesus of Nazareth. And over and over again in this book, Tolstoy is teaching living relationship with Jesus of Nazareth is what following Jesus of Nazareth is all about. And I know that virtually everybody here in my voice this morning, you've seen people in your life, and they're imperfect people, they're not, none of us are perfect Christians, but you've seen people in your life that have had a living relationship with Jesus. And one of the reasons that you're a follower of Jesus today is because of that. One of the great terrible things that happened in the United States of America, and this also happened in Canada, and in South America, and in Central America. People from Europe came over here, and they thought Native Americans were savages, and were beasts, and were primitive, and they had no idea that they had deep, deep faith in a loving higher power. There's a town in Kansas called Wathena. And here's what these primitive savages meant when they called it Wathena. Wathena is an Indian word. My wife's an artist, so this is really artistic. Wathena means, in the Indian language, sun shining on elk antlers. Tell me if that isn't a spiritual, beautiful name for a town. Sun shining on elk antlers. So, I would encourage you to go far beyond a faith in God. I want to encourage you to go far beyond a belief in God. I want to encourage you to go on your own vision quest and have a living, breathing, vital, daily relationship with Jesus of Nazareth, the Son of the living God who loves you more than words can possibly describe. Amen.